Robert McTeer is an American economist. He served as president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas in the U.S. for 10 years. In this excerpt from a commencement address, the former president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas makes the case for studying economics. Why you should study economics. My take on training in economics is that it becomes increasingly valuable as you move up the career ladder. I can't imagine a better major for corporate CEOs, congressmen, or American presidents. You've learned a systematic, disciplined way of thinking that will serve you well. This will be a great help to you. By contrast, the economically challenged must be perplexed about how it is that economies work better the fewer people they have in charge. Economics training will help you understand fallacies and unintended consequences. In fact, I am inclined to define economics as the study of how to anticipate unintended consequences. Whenever a government program is justified not on its merits but by the jobs it will create, remember the broken window. Opportunity Costs and the Broken Window Fallacy Francis' great economist Frederick Bastiat left the famous broken window fallacy in 1850. When the careless son of a shopkeeper broke the window of the store, he scolded his son. But after people around him said that the town earns money through the broken window, his opinion changes. This is because, when the store owner spends money to fix his broken window, the window store gets new work, and with the new money earned, the owner of the window store will change his old shoes and buy new books. As a result, the town's economy is up and running and the industry is activated. This is a very likely story, but they cannot earn benefit from a broken window. Because the money used to fix the window could have been used elsewhere. The term opportunity cost was first used by the Australian economist Frederick von Weiser in 1914. Far before then, Though he didn't use the term, Benjamin Franklin explained the concept of opportunity cost. This is from Advice to a Young Tradesman, which he wrote in 1746. Let's say a man who could earn 10 shillings a day spent half his days spending 6 pences while eating, drinking, and having fun. We need to remember that the loss doesn't end at the 6 pieces. He has also lost 5 shillings, his half day's work worth of money. For your information, 1 shilling is equal to 12 pence. The Broken Window Fallacy The broken window fallacy is perpetuated in many forms. Whenever job creation or retention is the primary objective I call it the job counting fallacy. Economics majors understand the non-intuitive reality that real progress comes from job destruction. It once took 90% of our population to grow our food. Now it takes 3%. Pardon me, while, but are we worse off because of the job losses in agriculture? The would-have-been farmers are now college professors and computer gurus. So instead of counting jobs, we should make every job count. We will occasionally hit a soft spot when we have a mismatch of supply and demand in the labor market. But that is temporary. Don't become a Luddite and destroy the machinery, or become a protectionist and try to grow bananas in New York City.